But a month from now, I mean, obviously I get a three-day call or something. Uh, there are certain calls you have to make to keep the factory happy. I understand that. And then your CRM probably is going to prompt you to call me or send me an email or something. But and then four months from now, I get this message. I don't answer the phone, but this message. It's uh, Catherine, and the message sounds like this. Hey, Catherine, this is Steve. No, hey, Steve, this is Catherine. <laughs> hey, Steve, this is Catherine from Clay Cooley Volkswagen. Just, just want to let you know that I'm here for you if you need me. No need to call me back unless there's something I, something I can do for you. Um, I'm your car girl at Clay Cooley. Click. By the way, is that intrusive? Is it, is it irritating? Is she asking me for anything? No. no. And then the next month, I get a text. Basically says the same thing. And the next month, I get an email that she offers to set a service appointment for me. Here's what's happening. By the way, am I ever going to forget her? No. no. Now, three or four months go by, and now I'm on the golf course, and somebody says, hey, hey, where, where did you get your car? Now, what do I do? I know exactly who to send the customer to. This cat that sells 57 cars a month, he gets 20 to 25 referrals a month. He's never asked for a referral in his entire life. He's even taken it to the next level. He offers to be a source of referrals for his customers if they're in any sort of business where referrals would help. And he reminds them on a monthly basis that he's always going to send them referrals. What do you think that does to his chances of getting a referral from those people? If your, say, if your customers don't forget you, they will send you people. They're just not going to know anybody, with rare exceptions obviously, at delivery or when you're making a follow-up phone call. If you're making a follow-up phone call and you're constantly badgering the customer for referrals, is that going to make them like you or dislike you? Dislike me. Dislike you. Follow-up. Again, you've got text, you've got email, you've got the telephone, which would either be customer picking up or voice message. Um, do any of you use video to follow up? It would be impactful. The customer would never, ever, ever forget you. All right, that's my tangent. Um, all right, leasing myths. You need to drive a certain number of miles to make leasing work. What if I drive 30,000 miles a year? Should I lease? I should, I should lease way more so than someone driving 12,000 miles a year. Didn't, you, didn't somebody say something about risk earlier? Le eliminating risk? Yep. That's what leasing does. It eliminates risk. Look, if I buy a car and drive 30,000 miles a year, at the end of three years, it's going to have 90,000 miles, right? Mm -hmm. If I lease it and drive it 30,000 miles a year, at the end of three years, it's going to what? Have 90,000 miles. If I buy it, there's no guaranteed future value. If I lease it, there's guaranteed future value. Now, I don't know how Volkswagen leases work. Um, I leased Hondas for years, and I could put 90,000 miles into the lease. So if I was driving 90,000 miles a year, I could lease it for one year. If I was driving 45,000 miles a year, I could lease it for two years. If I was driving 30,000 miles a year, I could lease it for three years. Do any of you know what the uh, mileage restrictions are on a Volkswagen lease? So it goes all the way up until 15,000 per, per year. However, I mean, it's gonna be 20 cents over a mile. Oh, but it, okay, 20 cents over if you bring it back over. Actually, they forgive the first 2,500 miles, right? Yep. Okay, um, but how much, how much can you build in up front? Well, and, at, and at what sort of discount? Much as, you want. as much as you want. But, but is it going to be 20 cents a mile or is it going to be less? It's less. Well, because most of the time if they just they just change the residual. Correct. They just drop the residual. Mm -hmm. I turned in a Honda Pilot, a 20, 2009 Honda Pilot in 2012, and they gave me a check for $9,500. That's how much more it was worth than the residual or the guaranteed future value. Every vehicle I've leased, save for one, in 1996, when I turned in my Suburban lease, I had to stroke a check for $3,000 because the salesperson who put the lease together and me, neither one of us knew what we were doing. The lease was just structured very poorly. 
but I learned my lesson. And leases have always been profitable for me. My wife's leased all her vehicles, and every single time she's either got equity when she trades it or gets cash back. And like, like I said one time, I got $9,500 back. Now, your payment's going to be higher because the residual is lower. 